Question, what happened when this guy gave me this park with this box and then cut my arms and legs off by telling me that I wasn't allowed to use DLC or Theme Maker's Toolkit items? Hey everybody, how's it going? So I'm building something for Moomin Little Sock's Little Rock Ridge and you're absolutely welcome to come and join in right after I come to terms with my loss of freedoms. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but let's be absolutely clear. I did nothing to his arms or legs. I didn't even touch the man. All I did was set him this ridiculous challenge. That's right, Nerd Chacho without any TMTK. Hilarious. Anyway, you may continue. Our story that... <laughs> Gather around everybody because it's story time and our story starts here with this bland looking box and a chat on Discord with Mr. Moomin himself. Now, we were actually talking about you guys and how you wanted to have some sort of collab between us. And while we can't commit to doing an entire park right now, we could commit to doing this. So I built a monstrosity B&M for him. So Moomin had just finished Worthington Farms, which, by the way, is an awesome example of what you can do with a low piece count and an incredible imagination. And he wanted to create a park using loads of content creators from around the world. World. Now the challenge was to build a western theme park using no DLC, no theme makers toolkits or any custom kind of content. So we essentially had to think like console players but not only were we restricted on these items that we could use we also had to squeeze it into this western theme as well. Now if you want to know how that turns out you're going to need to go and watch that series over on Moomin's channel because it's absolutely amazing. Now I started to research compact coasters and all of the usual suspects came to mind. Eurofighters, spinners, max launch coasters and nothing really stood out to me so I had to take a break and I actually started to watch a concert that Aqua did, remember them, Barbie Girl? at Tivoli Gardens a couple of years ago. I say a couple of years ago, it's like 10 years ago now. Uh, <laughs> show my age and uh, then it actually came to me Tivoli has got this compact B&M squeezed into a really small plot of land and being nerd chat Joe I've never been one to shy away from copying someone else's work so this is the coaster I came up with let's go for a tour so of course we're going to start here in the station and it's a flawless coaster so it has the trademark lowering floor little known fact the lowering floor for the flawless and the inverts were actually designed as technology at the same time B&M then realized that they could have two coaster offerings by having one above the track and one one below the track so it was just modified to accommodate for both of those trains uh, nerd alert and uh, so we're going to come out of the station we come into the feeder wheels so if you've watched the um the episode on the invert that i did the feeder wheels and the station is where the train is weighed and it then determines how fast the lift hill has to be uh, because the train especially when it comes to compact coasters like this the train has to crest the hill at a certain speed to make sure that it guarantees itself to getting around to the course so this is exactly what the uh, tivoli one does as well it's made sure that it's at a constant speed um, that is just right for the actual layout itself. So then we come into the first turnaround here and we come into a uh, vertical loop. Spoiler alert, I'm filming this ahead of already finishing uh, and so this bit here changes but the first iteration comes into a first turn into an airtime hill around a second turn and then into a zero G roll that you expect of course to be... Um, the ribbon effect that you have so it's heartlined it's got the ribbon effect and then we come into another turnaround into an airtime bunny hop uh, and then it goes below the ground level into a corkscrew into a turnaround and into a snake pass now the snake passes they have a very specific design because you don't bank them completely so you go from pretty much being uh, 90 degrees to almost not banking this at all to about 60 to 70 degrees and then into the brake run and the reason that you do this is because um, you want to minimize the forces on the riders at this point so uh, if you throw them into a heavy bank, into a heavy bank, into a heavy bank, you're going to make them sick and possibly cause them injury. But because the train is already uh, comfortably leveling itself out at this point, you don't actually need to have as much banking here because the train is reaching an equilibrium. Uh, and then it has to come back into the banking again because this is the same banking as this one. So, that, so it's just, that's just how it works out, right? I can't really explain the physics in a really short <laughs> video without going into depth and diagrams and, and stuff. You just have to take my word for it uh, and then it goes into the brake run and then it comes round into the final brake run here the trains themselves they're actually relatively short uh, and I wanted to keep it that way uh, forgive the stuttering that's actually the auto save um, so I wanted the trains to be relatively short because it's a short course as a short layout but this coaster can cope with having three trains on the track uh, if it was to ever be uh, ever to be busy but uh, of course this is only running the two at the moment but it is timed enough well enough to, to have three if it was ever busy look at that the game 
game's just stalled. And uh, <laughs> we've also got the maintenance area here, uh, but spoiler alert, that's actually going to move. Now, uh, I did loads of work on the actual station area in advance here, but I'm going to talk about that in this update. So once I'd finished the layout, it was time to put it into the actual park file. And this was the park file that I was given. Don't worry, there's no spoilers. You've already seen the stuff that's being built in here. If not, you've seen more actually because Moomin goes on to build quite a lot around the actual coaster itself. So yeah, no spoilers for this one. You've already seen the stuff that's in here. Uh, so I knew it was already going to fit because I was given the box, uh, but I just needed to make it fit into the space and make best use of, use of that space. Now I realized that my maintenance uh, area over here uh, was actually going to be cutting off this path but it turns out that this maintenance area was actually going to be part of the park's backstage area anyway so I got permission from Moomin to uh, actually extend this into the maintenance area because it sort of made sense I just needed to find a way of covering all of this and, and, and everything up uh, the next thing I then started to do was to do the perimeter fencing now as you know we're not using any kind of theme makers toolkit items or anything like that um, so I had to kind of make my own and it end up, ended up being just the standard in-game uh, in-game fences that you get so you know the big the big tall ones uh, you just place them on an angle to each other so this tall metal fence uh, you just place one one way one the other and you can create some kind of um, mock mesh fencing right so that's what that's all I did there um, and then I just made it into one into one big building I started to do some of the terrain painting and the, and the work now this is the complete opposite to how I would normally do uh, a build I normally do the building structures the queue line and everything I don't do the theming until last but for this one I wanted to know how it was going to feel in the landscape uh, so I had to change all of the the actual land itself did all of the terrain painting and started to put the theming and stuff down I knew as well in this area I wanted to have some kind of a viewing area. I wanted to make a point of this uh, this vertical loop, this zero G, and what was now the Immelman. So you notice that this is no longer the, the first turnaround that I was talking about. It actually, I'm going to just get rid of the UI. It actually ended up being um, an Immelman because it sort of it created this mess of inversion right in front of you. This is the focal point of the actual coast to itself. And so, and this, of course, this, this turnaround. Um, so yeah, I wanted to make that, whoa, hello camera. <laughs> nice to nice to see you back <laughs> uh, so yeah I wanted to make a focal point uh, a focal point of that um, and then I came around this way and I had to be very very creative with the queue so I knew that I wanted to have some kind of path interaction going on here um, and I knew of course it was going to be western themes so straight away I knew what fences I was going to do and so I wanted to bring the queue underneath the corkscrew uh, and then I wanted to bring it as like an out and back and then it goes underneath the actual station itself in here. So I just started to do some really loose western style theming uh, in here. Uh, so this is just me starting to, to lay out everything that's going on in here. So I'm going to eventually come on and make this into a bit of a room. Um, the overall theme for this, by the way, it doesn't really have a coherent story. Uh, I wanted my initial... Uh, theming idea for this was thinking of the Wizard of Oz you know this is going to be some kind of a tornado that's coming through farmland uh, and this is why we've got all of these loose beams and everything on the top of here because they've kind of had so many tornadoes that they're just not bothering to rebuild the house they just throw some wood up and be done with it right um, that, that theming kind of gets lost that story gets lost I will be honest um, but actually it turns out that it's a bit more generic and it fits better in the park having a bit more of a generic theme especially when you know what other people have submitted so at this point i'm a privy to some information that you guys don't know yet um so i wanted to avoid the other themes of the other creators and create my own little stamp so that's why that's it's a bit weird and it felt like this park would have that kind of weird <laughs> weird feeling uh, i carried on the don't die fencing that i've made uh, around the outside as well so this is just like around the perimeter so essentially what you've got is still this rectangle uh, going on but now we've just got a bit more variation and a bit more stuff uh, going on now in order to uh, actually start to bring this to life and making it real i needed to start to remember what i use in theme makers toolkit and dlc items and start to recreate my own versions of those <laughs> that's actually so much harder than you can imagine because you don't have um things like clutter so you don't have pallets and boxes and 
the barrels that I normally use and the signs that I normally use uh, that the don't die fencing. You don't have chain link fences. And I didn't even know or even realize that you don't have the wooden fencing that came with the studios pack. And so this is the point where I almost rage quit. And I was like, I can't do it. It's just too difficult. But no, I, I persevered. I, I'd come this far. <laughs> so the fences themselves, these are, let's go back to our UI. Uh, these are made up of your normal um, wooden posts, the planks that come uh, with the western set, and also the beam that comes with the, uh, with the western set. And then it's just put onto a, a building grid and just spammed around. Um, so it looks awesome. The actual uh, maintenance area itself, this is again, it's all base game stuff. You know this already. That's that's no surprise. Uh, it's just the the normal walkway that comes uh, with the sci-fi pack and also the uh, railings that come with the sci-fi pack. This one comes as part of the um, coaster support pack. Uh, and then so, so do these as well. Um, it's all close to support stuff. Uh, the girder comes as part of the western theme, and also the rail uh, that I've sunk into the into the girder as well. That's just uh, into the western theme too. And then uh, the brake run is then just finished off uh, using uh, all of those normal techniques that I would normally do, just in a very slightly or well, just in a slightly different way. And then I wanted to have a ride photo booth, um, but at this point, when I was building and designing this, I didn't actually know. Uh, how it was going to turn out because I wasn't allowed to use custom content so how on earth do you build a ride photo booth missing all of the theme makers toolkit stuff that you usually do what am I going to do without putting a printer into the uh, into the desk into desk B what am I going to do without desk B <laughs> like what 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 what's, what so I just left this space for for the time being <laughs> and we come into the station. This was relatively easy to put together, actually, uh, because Windows as Walls is where you're actually going to come to life with this one. So, as you can probably guess, this is a Windows as Wall. You've seen me do this in all of the Top Tips videos uh, where I've used this exact window as a wall. So, I'm, you won't be surprised that this is what I've done here. Uh, and then we come over to this side. Um, and this is, again, the barn door. So, you've seen me do this quite a lot. Um, in the barn door. Um, so I'm just going to put that in the way of the train. <laughs> that was really good timing. I couldn't even do that again if I tried. Um, and then we've got the rough brick wall uh, here as well. So that's just your standard stuff. Uh, your corrugated iron um, wall set here and then you're just your normal, your normal beams. Now this is very different because my coaster stations and the areas surrounding it normally take up thousands and thousands of pieces. Like I think one of the trains, uh, one of the coasters I did for Raygate Lake ended up being uh, nearly a hundred thousand pieces on its own. So how am I going to do this in a blueprint scale? Like I've only got four to five thousand, four to five thousand pieces pieces that I can actually possibly use. How am I going to do this? Um, so I thought actually I need to start using the in-game stuff a little bit more creatively and start to use the stuff that we get given rather than creating my own. So the water wheel, for example, came into its own here. Um, the windows as walls came into its own because I was like actually I could save rather than doing plank by plank. I could use this this wall effect uh, but my next challenge I had then was how am I going to make all of the station paraphernalia stuff that I normally do you know the push buttons and the staff you, we haven't got any of the staff because they all come with the studios pack so I was like what am I what am I going to do uh, but I persevered with the stuff that I could do I did all of the beams inside here I used the western signs to create the the rows uh, the row allocation numbers uh, and the beams and everything that, that came in here so the station itself started to actually take shape quite nicely uh, especially like with the sawmills and everything and like I say I'm armed with information of stuff that's already coming in this area so I needed to make sure that what I was putting in complemented the things that are coming without copying it I'm already copying Tivoli let's not do <laughs> any more than that um, and then the last thing I did was the roof the roof is really uh, really really easy and I'm just I'm actually going to pull this apart so that you can uh, so that you can see it so um, if I move these out of the way uh, they're just your normal corrugated roof these are just loads of beams um, put together so they're put all into this into a line with each other uh, so that the roof pitch is the same for the lower part and the top part uh, it's just one's higher than the other and then it's all the beams that are placed together um, and I've double beamed in some places so that you can hide the ugly join that you sometimes get knowing full well that this ugly join you get on the top isn't going to be visible anyway because you're putting a roof on the top and then I've just put the other pillars in and then double pillared uh, along here as well to make it look like there's actually a join uh, inside 
inside here. And then of course you're going to have like this western theming so I just started to put the pipes and everything in. They don't serve an actual practical purpose, they're not for AC unit or anything, they are just sheerly there for uh, decoration and it just gives a little bit of a focal point in the actual roof space uh, itself. So what I'm then going to do uh, is carry on doing all of this, uh, all of this stuff and let me show you how this ended up as the final product. And so, after a couple of temper tantrums, a little bit of revision, and quite a few hours worth of work, this is what we ended up with. This was the final piece, and it really did start to bring back those memories of the days of the Alpha when the likes of Silverette was going around and building buildings using the in-game pieces, and I was just sitting there in absolute awe of the things that he was able to pull together. And uh, yeah, it just sort of brought all of those really warm, fond memories back, and it's just what turned out so 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 well i'm so pleased with how this how this was i did a lot of work on the actual track itself i had to reprofile it a couple of times uh, just to make sure that it rode as well as it's going to especially as compact coasters in planet coaster don't ride very well um, and especially if you use the four meter method to do them so there's a couple of the autocomplete methods that you uh, will see so like the bits on the zero g roll the bits um along the top here and everything I i've also done some custom supporting as well so you probably spotted that in the last update that uh, there was some supports and everything missing so i've just come along and just added in the missing ones i've taken out the unrealistic in-game ones and replaced them with realistic in-game ones you know like the uh, the loop supports that we get here and this one here there's a reason that this cuts off i can't talk about it um the episode's not going to be out by the time this one goes out so make sure you're stuck around with Moomin's channel to know what's coming in this area here. Uh, so yeah, this was this was like the the area that I did. I put um, I wanted to put in some effects into this one. So as the train comes around this bend, you've probably already seen it. There's a, a splash effect that comes around here, uh, and also there's a steam effect that comes through here as the train rounds the corner. Uh, I'm just actually going to leave the view here so you can see it. Um, and then I've also just dotted around a load of mine and western, very cliche. Uh, theming going on so like the upturned mine trucks and the rocks here's the here's the splash by the way splish 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 uh, so yeah <laughs> Well, welcome to the channel, everybody. <laughs> so, these are the uh, the upturned minecarts and uh, all of the rocks and everything thrown around. And of course, you're going to have barrels. I wanted to make a feature, um, like I wanted to have more head choppers because you've got quite a few head choppers when it comes to the actual track itself, but not with scenery. So I put these logs and everything in and then put all of the steam effect in this. So remember that the park would have spent money on this. Uh, it wasn't they didn't have a compact coaster to scrimp on money. They had a compact coaster because they were short on space. So money wasn't not, wasn't an issue. Uh, so we could have built absolutely anything. So I wanted to make a feature of this middle bit here where you come around into the steam area and through these logs. Uh, the idea with the original theme was that it was the tornado that's placed these logs down and you're sort of trying to escape it and go through it and everything. But like I say in the last update, I think it was probably lost. <laughs> I got lost along the way and just carried on. Um, so yeah, I also wanted to just to do some uh, tarting up of the area around it. So I've stayed within my boundary, uh, but I've so my boundary was like obviously all, all along here. But I've just put some rocks along here. Uh, I've also made a f some more features with some picnic benches along the the turnaround and everything. Um, and because the turnaround is still within the boundary, you don't need to have path covers and stuff. You're okay here. Uh, this was the biggest challenge because I thought, well, if if I if I could do this again, I actually wouldn't have had the entrance at the top here. I would have put the entrance down here. Um, but because I'd already put the layout and, and everything together before I was given the park file, I was like, well, I can't really change it now. It would just be going back to the drawing board. So I had to find a way of hiding this really ugly transfer track. And the way that uh, the way that I did that was to uh, put people through like a queue cover, um, almost like a, a, a roofing area here, and then flower it off so that when this is actually grown up, all of these flowers would come up here and you're walking through a tunnel of flowers. Absolute nightmare for hay fever sufferers. Uh, <laughs> so don't go on the ride if you've got hay fever. But that was the idea. It was going to go through this tunnel where actually you wouldn't really care or notice about the uh, about the maintenance shed. So this all came together as part of the final build. Uh, windows as walls and all of the usual techniques. Um, this, however, I'm just going to come back into the UI. Uh, this is just your Planet Coaster fence that comes again in the in the Western pack. Um, and then the stuff that we did have in game, the barrels, the um, sack truck, the recycle bins. These are the oil drums. I didn't realize at the time that these were actually in game. So these are the oil drums and then um, your rope spools and all of that sort of stuff. Then I created uh, the pallets. So I actually made the pallet myself. 
Um, I didn't want to drag anything off of the workshop or anything like that. Uh, and then the electric cupboards. This was the main thing I, I knew I wanted to carry across from my Theme Makers Toolkit habit. Uh, my dirty little habit that I've got. Uh, and these are just literally the squares put together um, into some kind of a rectangle to represent the electric cupboard. And then this is the screen mount um, bracket that you could just create the handle. And actually, they look as non theme makers toolkit items as good as the theme makers toolkit item does the theme makers toolkit stuff just brings it to life and makes it look more real but this is still perfectly believable with the in-game stuff that you've got um and i <laughs> i left this note for uh for moving himself uh, i left this bit for your backstage because uh, i didn't know i didn't want to commit to anything that was in this area and i think watching the episode uh like i say i'm recording this before the episode goes out so i haven't seen it yet but i think um this changes anyway so ignore that uh, and then I came around this way um, and just carried on all of the clutter and everything within the maintenance area. Uh, made sure I put all of our compliance signs along here, uh, along with all of the lighting along the catwalks. Um, made sure that I copied across the electric boxes onto the catwalk itself. And then I created uh, these CCTV cameras, or what they're supposed to be CCTV cameras. This is probably the best that you can get with the time that we had and the pieces that we had. It's just the box light and a couple of beams. Like, that's literally all it is there's nothing overly special i'm sure there's a better way and i'm sure there's better ones on the workshop that you could use but that's essentially how i did it um and then the, i actually copied that across to be the ride camera as well so uh there you go it's the ride camera there and i mean they're perfectly believable right it does what it needs to do uh, there's nothing trick there's no trickery involved with it it's just really nice and simple to to pull together um, and then on the actual catwalk itself i started to use the ride time ride cam time machines and also the display sequences to be the uh, the actual control panels that you find inside the rides that was another thing that i knew i definitely needed to bring across so i built just using the rectangles that come with the um the art shape pieces and then sank the the ride cam machines and everything into into it and it actually looks like it's a it's a ride host booth right so this would be what you would use to operate the uh, operate the catwalk. And then just made sure that I put loads of other clutter around the maintenance area just to make sure that it's believable as a maintenance area. Um, and then inside the station itself, uh, we managed to find the Western people. So luckily, because this is a Western park, these are the only animat animatronics we actually have in game. So this fitted quite nicely uh, as it turned out. So what I did here was I just did loads of work on the underside of the station. Um, I didn't bother to put cables and stuff in because I really, I ran out of piece count. Um, so I sort of had to really limit myself to what I was actually going to do. Uh, I thought decoration on the outside of the ride and the things you actually physically see would be more important than the stuff that lives underneath the station. But just know that the original iteration of this, it did have cables and everything underneath, but I got carried away. Um, so yeah, I built these bins as well, by the way, just using um, the box lights. So uh, all they are are just, if I just edit this, um, so you've got a box light turned down, a box light turned down, and then a box light turned up to create the um, uh, the underside. And then this is, I don't know if it's going to let me select it because of the hitbox, uh, but these are the two um, brackets that I've used on the electric boxes, just turned the other way and then sunk in so that it creates the, uh, the actual flap itself to put your rubbish in. Um, and then I've just copied those around the queue line, right? And that's all that's all you that's all you do uh, and then inside the station just loads of clutter and loads of decoration that's added in here and then the uh how am i going to do this without messing the camera up because uh, you guys always complain about my camera work <laughs> so there you go there's the ride cam time machine that makes it look like the push points that you dispatch the trains using uh, this is way overkill for what you'd find at this but it's the best we've got right so uh, let's just work with work with the tools you've got and squint for the rest uh, and then we come down into the queue line. Um, so I finished the queue line here. I did a queue cover using the same technique I did for the don't die fencing. Um, that's in here. And then, of course, my trademark is all of my queue lines uh, have its own bespoke custom uh, custom pathing. So that's all I did. Uh, and you've seen me use this technique many, 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 many times. And because I don't have the mulch to hide my misdemeanors, I've ended up using rocks. And in some places, I don't remember where it is, uh, in some places I've used the, oh, it's here. Uh, I've used the actual soil at the time to game. And then I just raised the terrain on the outside to make it look like uh, the soil has then just been dug out to put a flower bed in. 
then I thought to myself, how am I going to do compliance signs? Because I didn't want to use the in-game ones because they're too bulky and too big. So I found the fiberglass light detail that comes uh, with the sci-fi theme. Uh, so if I just edit this building, um, if you take the light of that and turn it on its backside, the uh, the actual thing itself looks like it's a sign. So just give it some relevant uh, compliance signs colour and away you go. You've got a believable looking keep out sign. So that's what I that's what I did um, and then of course I did loads of foliage around here again nothing that you don't find in the base game everything in here is all the base game stuff it's just recolored repurposed and sunk into the ground um, and made to look relatively uh, relatively decent and then uh, I say relatively decent you, you guys can be the judge of that right <laughs> and then I just did the outside of the station so I just did some touching up around here um, just some fine details you know I put the railings and, and stuff on and lots of western style paraphernalia it felt a bit bare when I did the original uh, the original idea and then inside the actual queue itself I put uh, stuff in here I put screens up just in case there were going to be some kind of videos that we could use uh, but obviously we're not going to be but carry on that western theme this is where it got lost right so this is where it went from uh, let's get rid of the UI um, this is where I got lost from the idea of doing Wizard of Oz and uh, the whole Tempestata uh, idea with the tornado coming through a farmland, etc, etc. And I started to use the Western theme and thinking, actually, this has turned into a saloon. <laughs> so, well, I lost his identity a little bit. Uh, but I wanted to have this little bit of a display because you're going to be in a cattle pen here. You're going to want something to look at. You're very much undercover. You're very much away from everything else. There's not anything else to look at. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to have these, uh, have these in here. A bit of a... A special effect kind of thing going on uh, and then we just come back to the outside of the actual ride itself and just to refresh our memories of how uh, this looks so guys i'm going to pop some glamour shots in here uh, so you know how this how works uh, but yeah thank you so much for joining a moment thank you so much for inviting me to do this um really really do appreciate the fact that you you know you sent the invite out for me to actually do something for you and i really enjoyed working with you as well so please let's do some more stuff guys in the comments let me know if you want to see more stuff because of course the more of you that tell us to do it the more we can try and persuade movement to do some stuff not that he's reluctant but let's let's do it uh, so yeah guys thank you so much for coming along i hope you've enjoyed this if you do you know what to do leave a like leave a comment uh, we, we both love um, chatting to you guys so uh, yeah please do so and, of course, if you want to follow us, then you're more than welcome to. We're building Chacho Landia at the moment, where we are let loose with the Makers Toolkit and all sorts of stuff. So, please come along and join us. I think we should go on for a ride on this one. Um, but, guys, until we speak again, please look after yourselves. Take care. Bye-bye.